Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 59. So anyone who's been uh, following along, uh, you will know that I am here in Houston, Texas right now. I'm in my hotel room. It's a little later uh, than I usually um, uh, do the podcast, but um, we're just we're just getting back Uh we were doing a show. We had a show over at the Arena Theater in Houston. It was a really, really, ah, uh, what a great show. What great people. Incredible, incredible city. I've been coming out here for a very long time, and I don't know. I've always, I've always liked the people out in Houston. But tonight, man, it was like a, just like a special clique of people were out here. Uh, very, very gracious and very appreciative and People met us up at the at the at the hotel. There was, I guess, a lot of people were staying there because we we stayed just a few minutes, like right up the block from the venue. Um, uh, and uh, a lot of them were at the hotel, and they came up to us and they greeted the girls, and they were they wanted to take pictures and they wanted to share their thoughts and share, you know, just share, you know, w- you know, with us what the cover girls means to them uh, and what it's done for them over the years and. You know, when you're too close to the situation, when you're part of the group or like a manager, like I am, you, it's it's hard to uh, it's t- it's sometimes it's hard to understand that you know until people break it down. But then you think about your your own uh, artist that you yourself are um, a big fan of, whether it's an actor or a performer or some sort of public figure. Um, then you there's something that they do to touch you and those things create this attachment and I see this in these in these people and I sometimes I just want to listen to them uh, because they're trying their best to be to be as sincere like they really want to express to you the thought and I understand I understand you know so but um once again uh tonight was great performance it was I love the 80s and 90s um, it was with Jocelyn Enriquez, the original Cover Girls, um, Lisa Lisa and Stevie B. Um, we did not stay long enough to see uh, Lisa and Stevie. We got to see Jocelyn. We got to hang out with her for a little while. Uh, Jocelyn's mad cool people. Um, I go way back with Jocelyn. I've been on the road with her back in the days when she first started. And... Um, and then she left the scene for a little while, and it was good to see she, she, her come back. She was always very professional. She always gave a quality performance. performance. Um, then nobody's going to tell me that she can't sing. She's got an incredible voice. I mean, her manager, who's also her husband, I mean, they're just great people. And I'm really glad that they're, that they're back, and um, I wish them a ton of success, and I hope we, uh, we cross paths um, many more times in our career, uh, her and Angel really, really click. Um, Angel considers herself an honorary Filipino <laughs> because um, you know a lot of people confuse Angel as being Philippine. <coughs> but just for clarity's sake, she's Puerto Rican. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, so you know, Justin went on and we got to watch her performance and she rocked it, man, like always. Um, then it was time for us. Now, this was the deal. So today was a little crazy because the communications with the promoters was off. I was trying to text them. They weren't texting me back. Um, I didn't have an itinerary for anybody who's just to just to understand, just to, for clarity's sake. So that, that way you guys uh, understand when we do these shows. OK, before it's called advancing the date before we even come here. We need certain information to um, 
certain information so that way just to kind of help us uh, uh, get through the day, you know, and it's like, of course, you know, let's go further, you know, further back. So like hotel information, we need to know who's picking us up at the venue, who's picking us up at the airport, who's driving us to the venue, what time is sound check? If there's going to be a sound check, you guys know I've walked you guys through sound checks on some of my videos. Uh, it's basically we go to the venue and we just make sure everything's running good. You know, if we need three mics, we want to make sure they have the three mics. If we need three mic stands, then we want to make sure they have the three mic stands. We want to make sure that they can play the music in the format that we need, whether it's, I mean, most people now use MP3. It's on a flash card, and they'll use that. Um, they'll use a flash card, uh, a flash drive, and they'll just run an MP3. Um, I'm hearing music. Sorry, guys. But, um, yeah, so, uh, so it's good for us to know when the... Um, uh, what time the sound check is all right so and then uh, we want to know of course what time is show time do we go on at 10 9 11 midnight and if we do what time do you want us at the venue so all this stuff is good to have the stuff written down you know typed up and then distributed to all the acts <coughs> you know so that way we know uh we have everything and then the promoters don't have to worry about that but sometimes you get promoters that are so caught up in promoting that they, they forget about these things. They don't. I don't think they do it intentionally because nobody would want to see their event, you know, upside down. You know, um, I know how to how to go and get the information. If not, I've been doing this long enough to be able to um, look at the lineup. No more or less. How's it being lined up? Like who's opening? Who's closing? I know more or less where everybody's show is. So I can pretty what time the doors open. What time usually they have the first act on. And I can pretty much guesstimate what time uh, we go on. And that's what I did today, you know. So I guesstimated that we would go on about 9.30, 10 o'clock. So I had a pickup come here to pick us up at 8.30. Got us to the venue before 9. Um, and we were good to go, you know, and everything went good. So this was the, the kind of cool thing about this venue. And... Somebody had mentioned it, but because we didn't do a sound check, we didn't know. I totally forgot about it. Like, it was brought up to me from a fan. The promoters didn't even remind me of this. And I forgot to tell the girls about it. And Caroline found out. She came to me. Latif, you did not tell us that this stage rotates. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> so the stage sits right in the middle, in the center of the arena. <clears throat> And it's it and it, it just turns it just turns around it just it spins it's this big round stage and it just turns and the DJ booth is up there and the performers are up there and what you do is when you um you're coming out from the back they have this long ramp that comes all the way back from the back where the room that we were at and it comes all the way to the stage so you just walk down it's almost like when you see a boxer entering and he's gonna get to the ring he walks down that long. Um, you know, Long Isle was the same thing, except when you get there, uh, you kind of got to, you know, they, they, they have the stage still when you enter, so you're not, it's not moving yet. So you walk right onto the stage, get to position, and, and the show starts, and as soon as the show starts, the damn stage starts to turn. Now, I loved it. I got on stage. I was on stage in the back, uh, you know, doing the sound, uh, filming a little bit, and I'll tell you, it was really cool, actually. So I've never been on a, on a turning stage like that. So I had a good time. The girls, however, they found it a little difficult. Angel especially because of her heels. So her heels are probably four times the length of, uh, of Carolina Sunshine's. You know, the only difference, though, Carolina Sunshine, you know, they well, they have to... Angel dances just as much as they do, but she has a little more freedom. She doesn't always have to stick to the routine. They do, and if they fall off, it's going to look off. So Angel's able to go in and out. Um, but, uh, you know, but the girls were, uh, you can see, you can see it was challenging. They were both saying that when they would look down, they would actually get dizzy. And, I mean, I didn't, I didn't notice anything, but at the same time, I wasn't looking down. I was, um, I was at the table behind at, at the booth, so... But um, um, the outfits that they had wore also was uh, incredible. They wore gold, uh, gold and black, I believe. And when the lights hit that thing, oh, my God, it was like Disney on ice, like the colors and the gold. And 
man, it was so so great. And then and then the crowd, man, the crowd was just phenomenal, man. Every song that crowd sang along and the applause, and it, it was a good good. I mean, you know, when I enter these events, I always I don't hope for the the worst, of course not, but I have to expect it. It's just part of the job. You can't go in there thinking everything's gonna go great. Yeah, you can't. People say, well, you know, you got can't put it in the universe. You can't. You can't think it's gonna go wrong. Well, no, no. But you can't. It's like not being fearful. You know, even boxers say they go into the ring. They're scared. They're scared. And I think scared. Being scared is a mechanism to uh, to help you um, to help you uh, you know. Do what you have to do. You know, it really it keeps you on your toes. And and the same thing going to these these events. I get scared and I, I get nervous. And you know, I, there's so many things that could go wrong. You know, or the girls could hurt themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the the mic could go off. The sound could shut down. Um, it could be a fight. Um, somebody could fall. Uh, Man, like numerous things, uh, promos can give you a hard time not want to pay you. Um, I mean, like it could, it goes on, it goes on. So we get raided, you know. Fire department can shut us down. Um, I was in a cl- in a club once, and someone shot some tear glass, like a mace or whatever, and like the whole club man started to, their eyes started to burn. It was the, it was a mess. So, you know, you go to these places, you know, you you hope for the best, you pray for the best. But you have to be prepared. You have to know, okay, if this happens, what am I doing? If this happens, what happens? So the girls are prepared. If there's something that I have to do, if, guys, you got excuse me. I'm just a little under the way, a little, um, little out of it, man. It's 2.19 a.m. right now. Uh, but I want to make sure I, I spoke to you. Um, but, uh, but uh, you know, other than that, you know, everything was good. Uh, when we finished the show, we went back backstage uh, Jocelyn was still back there. We took a ton of pictures. You can find them on Facebook. Um, <coughs> find them on, on Facebook. Um, really great shows. Um, the guy who was driving us was a good friend of us. Uh, it was uh, Miguel Jacquez. Big shout out to Migs, Miggy Migs, mad cool people. Uh, we've known him for a very long time, and uh, he's out here, and he's just. I you know saying a fan is like a, an understatement. It's like a fan is just. He's beyond that. He really has a passion for not only these these girls, but for all the artists. He has such a such a, a great knowledge of the genre in itself, and um, he's always been extremely extremely supportive. I mean, he supports us in everything we're doing. So when we knew we were coming to Houston, man, I reached out to him. I said, "Hey, man, you know, they asking me if I need a driver. I told him I got one. You you down? You want to drive us?" and you know, he agreed, and we got to hang out. I kind of felt bad earlier when he picked he picked us up at the at the airport. He went and picked up uh, the girls first, then came back to the other airport. He went to Houston Hobby, picked up our uh, Carolina Sunshine, then went over to George Bush Airport and picked up me and Angel about a couple hours later. So he did a lot of driving, um, and uh, so you know he did me a, a big solid uh, by doing that. So you know, definitely uh, a big shout out. Then you know. When we got to the hotel, we kind of wanted to hang out a little bit, maybe grab something to eat, but we were pressed by for time. And since I didn't have the itinerary, I didn't want to hang out because I could be hanging out. And at the last minute, they could say, okay, guys, uh, be here in 30 minutes. And there's no way that can ever happen. So I decided to go straight to the room when he dropped us off and, you know, start getting ready, uh, you know, just in case they called. You know, all we have to do basically is jump in the shower, get dressed and go, you know. So, um, but um, after the show, um, we went back to the to the hotel. And we hung out, sat at the table, ordered some food, and we had a good time. And we had we all spoke and um, real cool. So you know, I just want to you know bring that up to him. You know, shout out it was really good seeing him, and um, you know, uh, he's a, he's a good friend. So but anyway, uh, other than that, um, now we're heading to Austin tomorrow. I tell the promoter pick us up around noon, because uh, that's when checkout time. So I can't be in this hotel anyway. So we might as well leave up by that time. Uh, I think <clears throat> I think the the drive is maybe three or four hours, and then we're gonna shoot down to Austin. We'll check into that hotel, maybe get a little rest, 
and then do the process all over again. This will be a different setting. This is a more um, up close and personal, more intimate setting. Uh, the acts are pretty much, I mean, the fans are pretty much right there. Um, and we'll probably do some sort of meet and greet. We can't really do the meet and greets at these other venues. They're not set up for it. There's like no place to go to do that. And um, when you have other acts coming up, they don't want to disrupt that. So it's not a good idea to, you know, while one of the acts on stage to go and set up an autograph session with another act because it could look bad, you know. So we didn't do that. But uh, tomorrow we'll be, uh, we'll be doing autographs. So it should be cool. Looking forward to tomorrow's show. Just trying to get myself in that state. I'm exhausted, man. <coughs> um, Angel's already uh, um, taking a shower, ready to shut down for the night. And uh, and so am I, and, and that's pretty much it, man. So anyway, I just want to um, reach out to you guys. This is uh, episode, uh, what did I say, 59? <laughs> so that means tomorrow will be 60, the big 60. Okay, all right. But, um, yeah, so this is episode 59, and uh just want to tell you guys thank you for following along. I appreciate it. Um, you guys, we're right now we're in Houston, so like I told you, this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow night. We, I'll be dialing in from Austin, Texas. So um, until then, good night, Freestyle. Down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.